This is your chance to finally learn to write smart contracts with Rust. After you watch this video, you will have taken a step forward towards your goal by learning to write and understand not only Rust, but also how to write smart contracts within programming language in order to deploy it to a substrate-based blockchain. If you want to understand every line of this code and run it on your machine, stay around. Let's start by setting up your machine. In order to set up properly my environment, I had to follow the documentation on Substrate. But make sure you've previously completed the steps I mentioned in my previous video, Learn Rust for Smart Contracts. I'll give you the link around. So for those who went through Rust installation, let's go to the next steps. Time to run the following commands. The first is the brew install protobuf, then add the nightly release and the nightly WebAssembly targets uh, to your de development environment by running the following commands. The Rust up update nightly and this one here. Next on the list of commands to complete the installation part is install CMake. With that, it should be working everything on your machine and it's time to jump to, the, to creating a project. Here we can see how it's going to look on our VS Code. So before we create a new project, we need to install the latest version of cargo contract and here is a command. And now let's create our incrementer project by running contract, a cargo contract new incrementer. Incrementer is the name of the project. By default, as you can see in the image there, the template lib.rs file contains the source code for the flipper smart contract with instances of the flipper contract name renamed incrementer. As you can see, I've already replaced that with the contract provided in the docs where I've completed all the steps to finish our first contract. But before we dive into that, let's have a 30 seconds break to speak about ink and substrate. What are exactly ink and substrate? Ink is designed specifically for developing smart contracts to run smoothly on substrate-based blockchains. Substrate boasts a runtime module known as the contract palette, creating the perfect playground for your Ink smart contracts. With Ink, your smart contracts are compiled into WebAssembly or WASP, making them ready for action on the Substrate stage. Once you've perfected your smart contract, deploy it on Substrate-based blockchain with the contract palette enabled, and voila, your decentralization solution is live. I hope that is clear enough as an introduction. We'll keep digging as we learn more. Now going back to the code. So far from the last article, Getting Started with Rust, or the video, Learn Rust for Smart Contracts, we know about the way the struct, imp, and the functions inside the imp incrementer are declared. Now, what is there new for you from this code? Let's analyze the new elements. Modules. As you can notice, the mod incrementer with its tag, we will talk about those in a moment, is used to declare a model, which is a way to organize code into separate units within a contract. Important fact about using models, models in Rust are also serve as privacy boundaries. By default, items in a model are private and can only be accessed from within the model. What else can we notice here, guys? Two constructors. In Rust, and consequently in Ink, Having multiple constructors is a way to provide different initialization pathways for a structure, and it's not a matter of overriding, but rather overloading. Here's how it works. When deploying the smart contract, you choose which constructor to call based on the initialization behavior you desire. When deploying the contract, you could choose to call either the new constructor if you want to initialize the value with the value pass, or the default constructor if you want the value to be initialized to zero. Next thing I want you to notice, guys, is in this function, this is the return value, right? So did you notice anything different in the line? It doesn't use the semicolon at the end of the line. If the last expression in a function does not have a semicolon, Rust treats it as the return value. Now, I mentioned earlier about these attributes. Attributes in Rust are a form of metadata used to add additional information to models, crates, or items such as function structs and enums. Ink utilizes custom attributes to provide a domain-specific interface for smart contract development. For example, Ink storage is used 
to the notate the primary storage struct of the contract ink constructor for constructors and ink message for callable contract methods. These ink specific attributes are an essential part of writing smart contracts in ink, providing a clear and structured way to define contract behaviors. And that is all for now guys, I hope it's clear so far, we're getting there, we're learning new things, so hit that subscribe button to not miss the next step of your journey into smart contracts with Rust. See you soon.